threats and instability and verbal assaults and accusations. And it's becoming more and more normal. We're seeing headlines of toxic relationship leads in this. Their phones are off. I have no idea where they are. He doesn't want her to hurt herself. That is what I firmly believe. He is trying to keep her from hurting herself. And in this, now he's in a situation that he may not be able to get out of. And we see the conversations that had occurred between him and Reagan, and it is, it increases and intensifies in her just saying, I want to see you, I want to see you, I want to be with you. I'm not okay. <laughs> I just want to bring him home. June 25th of 2024, a public plea to find Chandler Kubander made headlines. Chandler was last seen on June 24th of 2024 at Crunch Fitness in Savannah, Georgia. Now this was very alarming for his mother especially because one specific thing about Chandler's disappearance really frightened her. Her intuition warned her and she shared this publicly as fast as she could. Please do not delete. Help us find my son. And this looks like it was a shared post. It says, I have an emergency. My brother has been missing since yesterday afternoon. Last seen in a gray t-shirt, black shorts, and black vans. He is 24 years old and 5'11", medium build. He is last known to have been obtained by a woman named Reagan Anderson. She is a danger to herself, and he is believed to not be with her willingly. Both phones are turned off, but the last known location was Crosby, Tennessee, around 7.30 p.m., June 25th of 2024. Now, if that does not reveal a big picture of what this young man just 24 years old was dealing with and what does really what does when a mother hears that her own child is missing and goes right away to think oh man his lover was a bit unhinged that is very telling Story goes that Chandler and Reagan were both just 24 years old. Both people were firefighters in Georgia, and both these people had a romantic history together of about seven and a half years. So they were very young high school sweethearts. They grew into adults together. They went into the same career path, working at the same place known to be Liberty County Fire Services in Hinesville, Georgia. I'm sure. This was a power couple that everyone at some point thought was making a life together and would be perhaps a very good life ahead. However, a lot of things look pretty good in photos on social media and look promising on paper. Well, Chandler had broke it off with Reagan at the beginning of this year in 2024. Apparently he had had enough of the toxic relationship experience with his young lover. You know me, I have questions. I mean, I'm already looking at the patterns here. Like he broke it off at the beginning of this year, you know, seeing as to how this was around the holidays, seeing as to how he did nearly everything with this woman, they had lived together. And then he's, you know, having to go to work and see her because they work in the same field at the same place together too. You know, whatever all this was, Chandler was fried of it. He's like, it's over. He moves back in with his parents and he decides that he's going forward with his life single. Well, Reagan was not okay with this. In fact, all the way around, it said that she was not okay as a person even with him because there was more than toxicity in their relationship and all these little ties that ended up being a big picture of, you know, people really doing a lot of life together and being forced around one another in every way. This was allegedly just a very abusive and controlling relationship on occasion. Tuesday, June 25th, 2024, this was Chandler's sister's birthday. He planned to attend her birthday party, which was very important to him. It was said by his mother that he had never and would never miss a party. And he spoke to his father on the phone before deciding to head to Crunch Fitness for a morning workout. However, what Chandler was talking talking about was the topic of his ex-girlfriend, Reagan. He was discussing this with his father because Reagan had been transferring money to him, which was a tactic that she had been using. Like she would send him money and then he would send the money back and then she would send it back again. So this time Reagan's father insisted, you know what? You need to report this right away to the firefighter lieutenant or the captain to which 
Chandler did. He went right away and he put in a report against Reagan at the job that they both worked at. So he did what he needed to do and then he went on with his morning workout. Just a side note here, I imagine that part of working out for him was just beyond being strong for the job at this point. It's been six months that he's been broken up with this young woman and this poor guy can't be left alone with this woman from his past. So I'm sure that he felt a need to keep his mental state strong as well, you know, just speaking from experience. At 1140 a.m., Chandler walks out of the building and he looks super comfortable. He looks like he just got in his workout. There's no distress. There's no sign of anything off in the camera that picked up him walking in the parking lot. He seems fine. He walks through the parking lot and shortly after, he is suddenly nowhere to be seen. You could see him walk out and that Reagan at 1030 had arrived at the mall. Reagan was driving around the strip where Chandler was at, went around a couple times, parked. After a 10 minutes, she backs up and disappears from the frame again. The mall parking does not show where my son's car is during the day, so we could not see what happened between him passing the edge of the camera and where his car was located. Now, two days prior to this day on June 25th, let's take a trip back two days prior, June 23rd, there was an incident regarding Reagan disturbing the peace of Chandler. Chandler's mom spoke to us here on opening statements on Friday. She told us about Reagan's toxic reaction to Chandler going out on a date. She found his car and where they were at and came and keyed his car while he was on the date and he called the police. She subsequently went to jail. Chandler was out on a date at Olive Garden with somebody totally new, and Reagan went in there and raised hell. So Reagan was placed in jail and was said to have bonded herself out for $2,400. She had been charged with criminal damage to property second degree and disorderly conduct. During this time, she harassed Chandler further about this whole thing in fear for her consequence to lose her job because of what she had just done. Chandler was telling Reagan during this time, stop, stop bothering me with this stuff. I need to think, I need to have my space right now. She was desperately, I mean, when I say desperately, like would not let off the gas. Like she wanted at any cost for him to come be with her, meet with her, see her, whatever it took. We see the conversations that had occurred on Sunday and Monday between him and Reagan, and it is, it increases and intensifies in her just saying, I wanna see you, I wanna see you, I wanna be with you. Um, I don't wanna be alone, I'm very scared, I don't wanna lose my job, I'm, I'm gonna go to jail because of the incident that happened on Saturday. Now this sounds like it was a pattern because he told her, I really can't. Every time we do this, we do this, and it turns out this way, and I've been told not to do it. So I can't. Anderson also has a history of suicidal ideation. There are multiple reports from Hinesville police that show Kubander calling the police because Anderson made threats to kill herself. Back in July 10th of 2023, almost a year prior, the police had been contacted and a report was made about a potential unaliving herself. Chandler was the one to make contact and file the complaint. He said, that he was concerned for her safety. He said that she was going through a hard time. He said she purchased a handgun and sent him a picture. He stated she could not breathe and needed him to come over. Chandler said she did not directly say she was going to necessarily hurt herself. However, she sent concerning messages. And then they go on to say that they were able to take the handgun away from Reagan. So back to the 25th, you know, he's coming out of the gym, the camera catches him walking out, and then suddenly he's vanished. And all of this had been going on. She is not listening. He has asked her multiple times. He's done everything that he can think of to move on with his life while trying to make sure that she was going to be okay. She's transferring money to him and texting him, and he just cannot get any peace with her doing this. As soon as he leaves the gym and leaves the camera that caught him walking in the parking lot, he is not seen again. Authorities end up getting involved, pinging phones and figuring out that they are basically on a, I guess, crazy road trip, you could say. As they are missing, Chandler's mother comes out and she speaks. And she says that Reagan was not in a good headspace and that there was a lot that the public does not know and that they still haven't told us about what this means. But it sounds like they are aware that within that relationship that it was pretty crazy, that it was getting bad. So when police began to search for the pair, the next stop that they're seeing 
from between here and where they've the last notification they went to they got to South Carolina where the phone pings after that ping um, we find that sorry we find that Reagan um, was pumping gas they see it on camera but they don't see my son the next one is her phone pings in Col uh, Cosby tennis Co sorry Cosby Tennessee once they get to Cosby Tennessee um, that's where it's gone cold so there's been some very very bad news regarding this case nobody wins authorities discovered Reagan wrote a goodbye note and left it at her home she instructed where she wanted her things to go and then she wrote I'm sorry Chandler in the note Chandler ended up somehow on that trip with Reagan and two bodies were found deceased over 400 miles away just recently. Two missing Georgia firefighters have been found dead in Tennessee. According to police, the bodies of Reagan Anderson and Chandler Cabander were discovered in Cock County, Tennessee, along with Anderson's car. They had been reported missing earlier this month out of Liberty County, Georgia. Cabander's vehicle was found in Savannah. Police say details about how their bodies were found and the events leading to their deaths are not available at this time. The bodies have been sent for an autopsy to determine the cause and manner of death and to be positively identified. The investigation is still ongoing. Now here's what's interesting. Chandler's mother posted something on Facebook prior to their bodies being discovered. I wanna clarify this situation. Reagan is not a bad person. She is a great firefighter. She is lost, unstable, and losing what she has known for seven years. They were slash are not good for each other. She is making bad decisions because of this. They are not a couple, but he cares deeply for her. We don't want anything bad to happen to either one of them. We want them home safe and sound. We do not know if she has any firearms on her, but we know she owns one and that it is a possibility that she has it on her. They have been a dangerous topic for her mental state. Chandler is a great man who works hard and loves deeply. I believe he is doing what he feels is right to keep them both in the world. The questions stand that we don't know where they are. Phones are off and that is out of character for him. His phone dies often, but not for 48 hours. He is a responsible planner. This is a crazy spur of the moment situation, and he had plans he never arrived to. He has no clothes and left wearing workout attire. He has made zero contact, also very unlike him, and he did not show up for work today. Please don't add fuel to this fire. All we want is for them home and safe, and this back and forth and speculation is awful. You know what? This is tragic. Tragic. One of the last things that his family and him ever talked about was her and him, how to protect him. That should be the light. That should be the it'll get better, keep doing what you're doing type of message. But instead, that was the final. That was the end all be all. That was the end forever. It's one of the last things they ever got to say to each other on his sister's birthday. This is seriously haunting and twisted. Obviously the autopsies will come back and we will be able to finally get some answers. And right now, gosh, my heart is like completely shattered for his family. I mean, every time that his mother got up there and spoke, she was shook. She was upset, she was crying, she was you can tell she's an empath, the way that she talked about Reagan and the way that she just pled for her son to come back safe. I thought that was so big of her to get on camera and say, you know what? These are two people that are very young and have a lot of potential. She didn't just say, my son, bring my son home. This woman's crazy. She actually showed love and empathy for Reagan as well. Now, the only thing that I know that his family has come out to say since is that they are just wanting some peace for the sake of closure. I am very interested to see what his family is going to do about this. I wonder if they're going to try to, you know, get on an interview and kind of talk about the details to help other people, or maybe for them, it's just a tragedy that they want to deal with internally. But right now we're not 100% sure what happened, but it is safe to say that she was suicidal and that she probably, took him under a situation of duress and decided that, you know, if I can't have you, then nobody can. 
this world can't. In my last video about my personal story, somebody actually made a really interesting remark that I had never heard of before, and it absolutely terrified me. They said, it was noted in my comment section that a study reveals that when a mentally unwell individual threatens suicide, that there's a lot of times it comes out homicide. It comes out like this, like if I can't have you, you can't be happy without me because I'm not happy without you. And there are many, many stories where before a homicide actually happens, that was a thing. That was a threat. I'm going to hurt myself if you don't. What's very interesting was how Reagan would threaten to want to hurt herself. And she never did from my understanding. I mean, it may come out that maybe she did do something, but not enough to end herself. However, I thought it was really interesting that she was uh, saying that she was going to do that. And then she was worried about keeping her life intact. Like she would say that and then she would get in legal trouble for it. And then she would kind of come back to Chandler and sort of imply like, oh, I'm very troubled because I just got in trouble and I'm about to lose my job. How serious was she at the time? I mean, what happened that morning after he reported her to his lieutenant or the individual that led his team at work. Like, what happened with that? Did she get the call and she was on the fence about it? And then when she got that call, did she snap? I mean, at the gas station, was he gone in the car since he was supposed to be with her and he was found alongside her? So obviously he was around somewhere. Was he gone at that point? How did she get him in the car? There's just a lot of questions. And I I just, my heart is breaking on this case because I feel like he did everything right. You know, we we talk about ways that you can get out of these types of situations. You know, obviously law enforcement intervened. She got in trouble. She was even taken in. Sometimes people aren't even taken in. Sometimes people are just served the restraining order and that's not enough. It's like there needs to be some kind of consequence and she had one. Law enforcement had intervened a few times. And I do see some conflicting backs and forths. Like some people are like, this is really sad for both people. And then other people are just really angry with Reagan. Like there's no excuse. It was young love. Everybody gets their heart crushed at one point or another. And then there's the whole aspect of she was off her medication. So she was off her rocker. There's a lot of conflicting things out there right now. So it's to my understanding that the family are just asking for peace. So we did want to bring awareness to this case because there are some red flags. You know, if somebody is threatening to hurt themselves, then take that as a red flag for yourself, potentially. If you are getting in a relationship with somebody that you work with, you know, if somebody is starting to take it that step further to not only uh, hurt your feelings and harass you and put you under distress and not letting go, but also starting to take to getting violent, you know, like damages to property and such, if people are going to jail because they're not learning rules, that kind of thing. These are not just, I'm gonna sleep on it and hope for a better day tomorrow kinds of situations. These are huge red flags. And so that's why we wanted to talk about it. So let me know your thoughts. Have you heard about this case? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate your time. You are loved and thank you so much for being here, listening to our messages, our signs, the cases here. It really means a lot to me that you've shown up today. I'm Chelsea J. Be blessed, loved ones.